служу украинскому народу. Служу украинскому народу. The Ukrainian national flag, we signed it. Each and every person here has its own name. We would like to thank you guys. And this is. Я працював з Толером більше часу, потім поїхав до Нідерландів, там працював будівельником. Після чого повернувся назад, також працював деякий час з Толером і так застав війну. Щось подвигло, так? Захистити рідний дім і свою родину. Я не хочу просто чекати, доки... Окупанти прийдуть і захоплять мій дім, ну, тобто, захист. В першу чергу це захист своєї родини, а в друге це свобода, свобода народу. Навчання тут воно дуже таке насичене, круте. Взагалі, щодо австралійських хлопців, вони також працюють з любов'ю, так сказати. По ним видно, що вони розуміють, кого і для чого вони навчають. Звісно, звісно, це взагалі людина, якою я був, коли я сюди приїхав, і тим, ким я зараз став, це просто небо і земля. Я вважаю, що це важливо хоча б просто тому, що, на мою особисту думку, Росія навряд чи вона зупиниться після того, якби таке було, що Україна програла б, я не думаю, що Росія зупинилася б тільки на Україні. Це дуже важливо, тому що Росія не бачить меж. Щодо навчання, я можу тільки висловити свою велику подяку всім країнам, які допомагають нам у цьому, тому що прогрес, він дуже замітний, і те, чому вони навчають нас, це дуже круто, і кожен з нас дуже вдячний за це. Щодо до війни, я щось додати, я навіть не знаю, що б можна було такого додати. Uh, I just want to say them uh, thank you guys uh, and uh, the, they need to know that they are really cool guys because uh, they teach us with dancing with love, you know. All that uh, what they was doing with us this was really cool. They look like real professional guys. They they just really cool guys. Yeah, we love them. Operation Kudu is Australia's contribution to the UK-led training mission uh, to train 
Ukrainians to return back to their home country to fight uh, their enemies. So Operation Kudu is significant for two things. The first thing is uh, that we need to demonstrate solidarity with Ukraine and that we're prepared to support them in their current uh, fight against their enemies. Our training audience will conclude its, uh, its course on the 24th of February. This is quite a significant date. It signifies the first anniversary of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. And we're going to have a joint parade with Australian trainers as well as uh, the Ukrainian training audience. And we're going to present a few awards and demonstrate that solidarity and uh, give them our best wishes before they return back to their home. So the training course is focused on two end states. The first one is what we call survivability. That's the ability for each of these soldiers to understand what their role is, how they can protect themselves and survive the first fight they go into, subsequently adapt and uh, keep fighting their enemies. The second part that we focus on is what we term lethality. That's their ability to utilize their weapon systems uh, to prosecute uh, targets of their enemy. And uh, combining those two things focuses on the course, focuses in on the course on several different uh, phases. So the first phase is essentially an introduction to how to be a soldier, how to work in the field, how to live in the field and be self-sufficient. Phase two starts to see the introduction of moving from individual soldiering skills in a section level tactics. Uh, this means that the recruits are able to conduct tasks as groups between eight and 16 people, and it moves into more complex offensive and defensive operations in a wooded or forested area. Following that, they move into more complex environments. These are things like urban terrain, as well as uh, how to live and fight, and also how to attack a trench. So very difficult tasks, things that Western armies train often for, um, but through what we're seeing in the current fight in Ukraine, uh, imperative skills that must be learned and must be rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. The final phase we go into is the, the rage phase. And this is where we specifically focus on lethality. And that's their ability to accurately engage targets and then subsequently build up to do um, live fire in a section uh, safely without any threat to their, um, their mates to their flanks. I think the most interesting thing about the training audience is their age. It's an, an eclectic group. It can range from people in their early 20s all the way through to people in their late 40s and 50s um, across some of the other training teams. Um, across all of them, what they all have in common is the patriotism for Ukraine, um, their identity in who they are, and how much motivation they have for defending their homeland. Walking around observing the training, it's, it's evident to see that the, the trainers take massive pride in, in what they're doing uh, here. They are so motivated, they're practicing their lessons, uh, rehearsing it with the interpreters, making sure that they can give the best amount of, or oh, the highest quality training uh, to the recruits to set them up for success when they go uh, back to their homeland. So firstly, the honor it's been in training the training audience, that's been uh, truly humbling, but also uh, a memory that I think all of us will, will cherish. The second point is working with our partner nations. So, New Zealand Army, who we have close ties with, as well as the UK Army, specifically the Irish Guards, who's the unit we're working with. Um, they've been exceptional and it's been great to work as a team with the, those, uh, those nations. The final thing I'll say about Operation Kudu uh, for today is, is broken down into three things. The first one is now that we've completed the first course, uh, we've learnt from uh, our experiences what the best case, how to best approach um, this operation and provide the best training to the Ukrainians. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is the development of our own, uh, junior, junior leaders and their experience and confidence as it's grown has been exceptional and been really, uh, really excellent to watch our soldiers develop in that sense. And the final, uh, part is probably the training audience. Uh, they've been the main effort and the focus that we've had to provide on them has been, uh, really something special to watch and, uh, and see how they progress uh, for their future operations. So the UK led mission to, to train Ukrainian soldiers has been going on for, for some time now. So whilst we have experience in training with other nations uh, from Southeast Asia and, and uh, Southwest Pacific, 
it's important to understand the lessons that uh, units from the UK, New Zealand, uh, and the seven other partner nations and what they have learned and the information they provided back to us uh, have, has been important that we understand that, but also provide our own idiosyncrasies to ensure that the best product we can give to the Ukrainian trading audience uh, is provided. So the final thing I guess I'll say is, um, whilst it's only a short deployment here, it, is, it has been a time intensive one. So I think our, our team members will be, will be tired and very, very keen to get back with their families and spend some quality time with them. So the graduation parade, which we just conducted or concluded, uh, it's important in that it signifies the, the last thing we'll do with the training audience. They're ready to go back uh, to their homeland and um, based on their own training progression, we might see some of those people straight going straight to the front line, which is quite significant. The graduation parade that just concluded, uh, it signifies the point where we hand over our responsibility back to the national support element who will take the training audience uh, back to Ukraine. Um, it signifies that they're ready. From when they first walked into how they are now, they've come a very long way. They put in the hard work, they go the extra mile just to get that little bit of extra training. I know for me personally, I'm not sure about the other teams, but I'm pretty sure they could all agree. Uh, even during our lunch breaks or say after we finish training for the day, a couple of them come up to me and ask for a little bit of extra training. And it's just really rewarding to see because they're all trying their best and they all you know, want to do the best they can considering what's uh, going on and how they're just trying to defend their homeland. It's really good to see. And they've come a very long way. Ah, uh, well, I think it helps most for me personally to teach the trainees when I can speak their own language. So I've just been going out of my way a little bit each day, learning like three or four words just so I can specifically help them, whether it's telling them to get into a standing position or the kneeling or the sitting down when they're on the range. It just goes that little bit extra mile. It shows that I care enough to give them the best training I can possibly do. And it helps them understand a little bit better when I'm speaking their own language to them, telling them to do certain things. So it's definitely a very rewarding feeling when they... Uh, do something that you specifically ask them to when you've done it in their own language. Everything they've done, they've done so well and methodically. It's it's quite unbelievable, actually, how well they've adapted to the situation and how well they learn. I know for a fact when I was 17 when I joined, I definitely wouldn't have learned as well as these guys have. It's, it's really quite astonishing, actually. It's the most rewarding work I think I've ever done and probably will ever do. Uh, the men themselves, they... I think they're pretty happy with the training we've been giving them and uh, I'm pretty happy with what's been getting given. The last couple of weeks have definitely been eye-opening for me because I understand what's happening over the seas and how it's all unfolding, but when you're actually talking and dealing with the men that are going to fight this war, uh, it's, it's definitely eye-opening. Personally, I'm very proud of being a part of something that's so uh, life-changing and altering for me personally. I know that the men who I've been working with are uh, they're very quick and good learners, so it's really rewarding to see all the training we've been giving work and pay off to an extent that it has. Definitely a brighter look on things. I know that the men that we've been training have uh, definitely gained a lot of information that they really wouldn't have gotten from any other armies. I know that we've done the best training we can possibly give them, so I know that they'll be doing the best drills they can possibly do when they get over there.